Dear Santa, I've been a good boy this year, and for Christmas I'd like a chest full of old lamps and an endless supply of broken clipboards. Oh, um, and an army of robots. Welcome to Episode 6 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. The first mod I'm going to show you this week is actually top of the Hot Files list on Nexus, and it is a mod called Robot Home Defense. And it pretty much does what it says in the title. It allows you to build robots to defend your settlement. And you create these robots pretty much the same way that you create any other defense. You go into the Build menu, you go along to Defense, and between guard posts and turrets, you will find robots. There are four types of robots. Protectrons, a word I still hate saying, general atomic robots, assaultrons, and sentry bots. As an example, I will show you the protectrons, because I'm sure people giggle when I attempt to say that. As you can see, you pretty much build them the exact same way that you would build any other defense item. So let's say I want to put, well, this one is it. This is a fire protect on here, robot. Let's have a police robot. That seems reasonable, doesn't it? So we'll put him here. You'll notice that it requires robotics expert rank one, and it does actually require quite a lot of materials. Actually, a, a few more materials than a turret does. There you go. And I now have a police robot guarding the outside of my settlement. And you will notice that the defense value does get applied to the settlement. So if I choose the Protectron Watcher, which has a defense of 15, and decide to place this here, you will see my settlement defense goes up to 93. So it does actually improve your settlement's defense. There are actually Protectrons that do other things. For example, the medical Protectron increases happiness in your settlement by 25. It doesn't increase the defense as much as you can see, only four. You will require the medic perk for this. I've actually used the God Mode console command to be able to make this, which gives me unlimited materials and all of the... Well, it un unlocks anything that requires perks. However, if you were playing this without cheating, you would need that perk as well as the robotics perk. There is a utility protectron that will actually scavenge for components for you. And indeed, there is even a robot that will collect food and water for you, but you need to do a little quest beforehand. I've not done that yet, so I've not unlocked it. And I will leave that as a little surprise for you. It pretty much works the same way for the general atomic robots. You can have your Lieutenant Gutsies as a guard. They're pretty damn tough, actually. Or you can have a Miss Nanny that will look after your little children and babies and, incidentally, increase the happiness of your settlers. And for those who want a little more strength in their robots, there are Assaultrons, the Assaultron, and the Stealth Assaultron. The Stealth Assaultron will require a lot of components and three ranks in Robotics Expert, four ranks in Science. But it will give you a whopping great 40 in Defense. So this is a very strong unit. You will need a lot of perks. You will need to be... Uh, pretty much a boffin, a robotics genius to make, and you will need quite a lot of components. And just for complete overkill, you can produce a heavy sentry bot or a normal sentry bot. I will, I will produce both. These require a lot of components. They require, for example, rank 4 gun nut and rank 3 robotics expert, but they have a large amount of of defense. One obvious concern would be balance. Is the mod overpowered? And the answer is no, not in my opinion. You see, these three missile turrets over here on the left have a combined defense value of 45, which is similar to the heavy robot. These particular turrets cost about 90 components to build and required gun nut rank 
3. This robot required only 60 components but they were much rarer components including quite a lot of fiber optics and 4 fusion cores. That's right it costs 4 fusion cores to make one of these and as you can see it has far higher requirements skill wise. You need 4 ranks of gun nut and you require 3 ranks of robotic expert. Whereas you can see for the defense turret it has very medium components and a lot less skill requirements. The turrets obviously require power. You can see they're inactive at the moment because I have not powered them. The robot does not and the robot is mobile so it has that advantage. However, the robot cannot be repaired. If it gets damaged in an attack I'm afraid it's going to get destroyed. Eventually you will have to build it again including those fusion cores. Whereas with the turrets you can repair them. And you may be wondering well how do they perform in, in battle? I mean are they much stronger than the turrets? It's one thing to have the defense value on your settlement but it's another thing when you're attacked by death claws. Well I actually did quite a lot of testing of this and I put four of the sort of best turrets, a heavy machine gun, heavy laser, shotgun and the missile turret in a row and let them kill enemies. I did the same for the top robots. In fact the robots had a higher cost in materials and an overall higher defense. But in the combat scenarios the actual turrets seemed to kill faster, a lot faster. Very very rarely did the enemies have time to even attract settlers into the battle whereas the robots took quite a while to kill them. So overall whilst the robots have the advantage of mobility the actual strength advantage is probably still with the turrets themselves. And so what that means is you can actually put a hell of a lot of robots around your settlement and you know make it very very secure but it's no more overpowered than doing the same thing with lots of turrets. In fact it will probably cost you more components, it will require you to have more skill and whilst it does come with some advantages it comes with quite a few disadvantages. In my opinion this is actually a really well balanced mod as well as being a hell of a lot of fun. Now if you're not into building shiny metal men perhaps you'd prefer to look like a shiny metal man and if so the Colossus bodysuit may be the mod for you. As you can see it allows you to encase yourself in shiny, very shiny metal. Um, the helmet is actually the synth helmet so that doesn't come with this mod but everything else does. The basic bodysuit is damage resistance 30 which is pretty strong and as you can see it turns your hands silver. So if I take out my weapons I can actually see silver hands and I'll show you what it looks like. It is a skin tight silver bodysuit but it's supposed to be made of metal so you do get some damage resistance. But there are also a lot of accessories so you have a belt, you have leg pieces, you have chest and crotch protection because that's important too and shoulder pieces. You even have a neck piece. Now the neck piece is not shiny if you just install the mod. To make that shiny you will need a mod called Chrome Synth Armor which reskins all the synth armor including the helmet. That's why the helmet is nice and shiny. The pieces themselves are fairly good. They're fairly high end protection with decent damage resistance and energy and radiation resistance. You can see below that I've got fairly good resistances. Most of the pieces can be upgraded as per normal so you can make them even stronger, add all of the utilities and even the bodysuit which you can't change the material understandably but you can add things like lighter build, padded, deep pockets and so on. There is a version of this mod that replaces the silver shiny bodysuit with a black matte one and you need to install the option as well as the main file and just make sure you click yes to mod when your mod manager asks you if you want to overwrite. 
And if you want, you can actually wear all of the individual pieces with different outfits. For example, the vault suit, and it works just fine. So you can have all the shiny metal pieces along with your blue suit. So if you are looking for some high-end gear that will definitely get you noticed, this might be one you want to try. I have been using Powered Armor quite a lot in my playthrough, and one of the first things I noticed was that I was a little bothered by the heads-up display. In fact, it's not actually accurate to call it a heads-up display, because of course, it actually looks like a dashboard. It looks like a bunch of dials that are about arm's length away from you, the sort of things you'd find in a car or a cockpit. Of course, you're not in a cockpit, you're wearing a helmet, and those dials are pretty much pushed up against your face. They're closer to your eyes than the end of your nose. That would be a little difficult to focus on, and it's more than a little claustrophobic. But with a mod called Clean Powered Armor Hood, you get exactly that. You actually get a real heads-up display. All of the elements are now on the heads-up display rather than on dials, and the screen is much less cluttered. I feel a lot less claustrophobic, I've still got access to all the information, but I get to see the world more clearly. Now I can tell you there still seems to be a vignette around the edges, you'll notice the darkening, and I actually quite like that. That keeps the feeling of wearing a helmet. However, if you don't like that, there is a mod called No Shaded Powered Armor Hood that will remove even that. As you can see now, I have a crystal clear display. It's pretty much as if I were not wearing a helmet, except for the heads-up display itself. So, if you do want a, a much less claustrophobic experience and a crystal clear vision experience, you can actually use these two mods together and get the best of both worlds. And as long as we're talking about heads-up displays, I may as well mention the hood mod that I am using currently. You may have noticed my heads-up display looks a little different this time. I am using the Pleasant UI mod, which basically makes the heads-up display a lot closer to the one you would have got in Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3. You can see the ammo is below the action points, the compass is below the, the health, and in general it just feels far more like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. You get to choose the crosshair, there are a few options including having it turned off except for in third person, although I did find without the dot settlement building was a little awkward actually. It still reacts to the items you are looking at and in general it's, it's just as useful as the normal heads up display. There are no options to disable things like the stealth meter or enemies on the compass, but if you are looking for a minimalistic, uh, almost Fallout 3-like heads-up display, this is definitely a great option. The next mod provides something I didn't realise we needed, but once I've seen it, I realise we do. Ramps. Now, in the vanilla game, you can make flat floors. You can even make stairs, which will allow you to climb. But you can't actually make ramps. And that's what this mod does. It just adds sloped pieces. So I will continue on my little project here. Oops. Getting to the sky. And as you can see, it fits really nicely with the uh, the flat pieces as well. So I could I could start another floor up here, and then go back to the ramps. There are there are a variety of different ramps if you want different flavors of ramps. I want you to be over there, and as you can see, you can actually click them to a lot of different places. It can sometimes be a tiny bit fiddly, but it's not actually that hard. Obviously, this is not what I would call structurally uh, a sound building. But you get the idea. You can actually make walkways that will climb up that are going to be a lot easier to access, especially if you've got all of those robots. And as you can see, you even get railings. So if you're safety conscious, conscious you can actually put railings all the way up 
which I think is a really nice addition because of course you do get railings. Yeah, they come under miscellaneous. They come under miscellaneous. Glad I found them. I was a bit worried for a second. So, you know, you've already got those, but now with the ramps mod, you also have sloping railings as well. This of course gives you far more, um, well, far more control over how you reach these higher elevations. Such a simple idea that I can't believe it wasn't in the vanilla settlement building. And just in case you're just way too lazy to actually walk up all of those ramps once you've finished, there is another mod by the same mod author as the last that will help you out more than a little. And it is a mod that allows you to build craftable elevators. Yes, you can actually build elevators with different stories. That's a two story. We've got a three story. I think we need more than three stories, don't you? I think we're going to need four stories. Four sto There you go. You see how that snapped into place? Look at that. Did, is it on the floor? Yes, it perfectly. Fit perfectly. That's that was brilliant. So there you go. A four story elevator. Close the door. Safety first. Oh. Oh, it automatically. I didn't realize that. I've always been clicking on this. When you click on the door, it automatically starts going up. Oh, there you go. See? Learning as I go. So here you go. You get up here, the door opens, and you're at the top. I I'm sure you can imagine how useful this is going to be if you want to make some really tall and impressive structures, but you are totally fed up of running up round and round stairs. I'm thinking of a certain lava tower. Uh, never mind if you don't get that reference. Uh, now, you can actually make them without the doors and without the elevator shaft. You can actually make totally and utterly uh, unsafe. Let's go for the big one. Let's go for the really, really tall one to end with. Oh, floor and... All oh, right, no, that's, that's right. Six story. Okay, so six story seems to be the limit. There you go. Let's have a look at this. So you could actually build whatever walls you wanted, if you even wanted walls. Maybe you just want an elevator as an observation post. Maybe you just want a place to look out over the, uh, the wasteland. I will point out that with the totally closed elevators, if you click on the door when it's closed, it means there's, uh, there's no elevator there. You can hear the elevator coming. It's the equivalent of pressing the button and the elevator will be summoned, which is, of course, very useful. But as far as I can see, there is no way to summon the open one. I'm afraid that is just not going to happen. I'm going to have to jump off and activate. Obviously, my little construction here is completely silly, but I'm sure you can imagine the serious buildings you could make with both of these mods. Both mods are absolutely superbly well done. I had no problems working with them. They snapped to other items really, really easily. And honestly, for me, these two items seem like things that probably should have been in the game right at the start. They seem so obvious, so useful. And to be honest, I'm just, I'm loving both of these mods. And that is all we have time for in this video. And in fact, for this year, this will be the last Mod Vault of 2015. I will be going away for a short break during Christmas, but of course I will be back to bring you some more mods. I hope you can join me for the next video, and I look forward to seeing you there. But until then, I wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and of course, remind you, as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.